Science in Your Life is back at the New York Botanical Garden for today's episode. I'm Molly, and I'm really excited to introduce our super special guest. This is Dennis Stevenson, and he is the garden's vice president for botanical research. Hello there. And this is Dario Cavalieri, and he's a master's student at the garden studying plant evolution and anatomy. Hi. Our last two episodes have focused on the wealth of information hidden in plant DNA, but obviously there's a ton of awesome stuff that we can learn about plants that's visible to our eyes. Scientists can use this information to understand a plant's evolutionary history, its physiology, and its role in the environment. Dennis and Dario are pros at interpreting clues from a plant's anatomy, and that's just a fancy word for the internal structures of living things. So today we'll be looking at cycad plants to see what their anatomy has to tell us. Hey Dennis, what's a cycad? Really what they are is they're very primitive seed plants. They have a long fossil record of about 400 million years. They've been here for a long time. And so by looking at the extant cycads, that is the living ones, we can also then compare them to structures we might see in the fossils to let us understand when certain features in their structure occurred in time. So Dennis, what part of the cycad anatomy will we be looking at today? Well, today we're going to look at something called vasculature, and that's just a technical term for talking about veins that most of us see in the leaves. What we usually don't know is that the veins are actually continuous into the stems of the plants. The veins are important because they contain two cell types. One that's called xylem, which conducts water. It's just like plumbing. And next to that are cells called the phloem, and their role is to conduct the photosynthate that the plant makes to feed the roots. So is it time to cut stuff up? Yeah, it's time to get out the giant butcher knife, which is totally a scientific instrument. And now we're going to do slice and dice pop. I'm going to take a stem out of the jar here that's been preserving alcohol, because often when we get a plant in the field, we bring it back so we can keep it forever and study it later. We cut it in half. Sorry, Dario, I know you wanted to do that. <laughs> and there we go. So we now can see that we have the inside of the plant. So what are we gonna do next? So we're gonna use this stain called fluoroglucinol, which turns the lignin red. And lignin is part of the xylem that we know as wood. Okay, now we're gonna proceed with the staining. The first thing we should do is put some of the fluoroglucinol onto the vasculature. Let's get that spread around nicely. Now the good thing about this is, it's going to be red, so I always wear a red shirt when I'm doing this because then when I stain my shirt, you know, nobody's really on my case about looking like a slob. So Dennis is actually adding acid to this because you need a little bit of acid to activate the stain. It's going to make everything in the vasculature bright red. Now that it's red, we've waited a few minutes, can you tell me what we're seeing here? Yes, what we're really seeing is the stem of the plant as it grows. In this case, we've looked at these xylem cells, which are really tubes, so they're dead at maturity, and they have this woody wall to them, so they act like plumbing, just like a series of pipes from the roots to the top of the plant, because that's where the plant's growing and producing its new leaves, so that's where the water's needed the most. The other thing we can do with this, if you see these cross pieces here, those are actually where cones were in the past in the life of this particular individual. And so if I see those in a fossil, I know I have a fossil cycad, and that tells me that cycads were existing at that particular point in time, say it's 200 million years ago, with this particular feature in them. So going along in the same vein about the fossils, there are other things we can do with this. For example, where the leaf attaches to the stem, this is called a petiole. And we can use the same technique on one of those petioles. We just make a cross section like we had here, and we can look at the distribution of the veins. Interestingly enough, these cycads have the veins arranged in the pattern of the Greek letter omega. Now the really cool thing about that is when you get into some fossils, you'll see the omega pattern expressed. So again, you have another way to know that you have a fossil cycad. You have a way to know when that occurred in the fossil record. And finally, when you do this kind of work with these interesting, unique structures in plants, you now have a basis to begin to see what genes cause those to happen. Dario, how are you using studies of anatomy in your research? Well, I use stains like fluoroglucinol to understand the structures on the surfaces of leaves. And when you understand that structure, you can understand how these species survive ecologically and physiologically. These anatomical studies are a fantastic starting point for understanding how a plant survives through space and time. We can integrate these anatomical studies with genetics and physiology and ecology and evolutionary biology to paint a complete picture of the plant kingdom. And thanks so much again, Dennis and Dario, for being here on this episode of Science in Real Life, and we'll see you next time.